welcome back to another edition of the Slash Report right here on Death Curse Society. I'm Red Crank, and trust no one. After an episode where they tried to shift focus to Margaret as possibly the killer in American Horror Story 1984, the episode Slash Dance had the counselors split up like Scooby and the gang to try to get to safety. Well, I guess we better split up and look around. A few betrayals later and a couple of characters revealing ulterior motives were left with more questions at the end of the episode, which is exactly where Ryan Murphy and his creative team want you. In one cabin, Brooke, Chet, Ray, and Nurse Rita are being stalked by Richard Ramirez, and in another, Xavier, Trevor, and Montana are dealing with who they think is Mr. Jingles. After a flaming bag of shit is thrown through a broken window, they discover it's only a group of kids pretending to be Mr. Jingles, complete with masks. But the real Benjamin Richter appears and dispatches two of the imposters quickly. Later, Mr. Jingles finds another imposter, but we're left wondering if he lets him live, showing a little compassion for the outcast of the group of pranksters. After escaping the Night Stalker, Brooke and Nurse Rita flee to the parking lot, planning to meet the rest of the group and escape in the remaining vehicles. Ray and Chet are running through the woods when they fall into a pit which is lined with sturdy wooden spikes. One of the spikes is now protruding through Chet's shoulder, pinning him to the ground. Ray panics until Chet passes out from the pain and shock. This is when Ray suddenly decides to unburden his soul by telling a story from last year where he accidentally killed a fraternity pledge. Twice. I'll let you enjoy that flashback on your own, though. Ray feels better having told someone his secret, even though Chet wasn't awake to hear it. But he was. Ray begins to panic again and escapes the pit, leaving Chet screaming and trapped below. Once they get to the parking lot, Brooke and Nurse Rita decide it might be best if Brooke goes to the police now and leave the rest at camp. As Brooke takes the keys and starts to open the car door, Nurse Rita injects her with a needle full of what she later says are horse tranquilizers, which paralyzes Brooke momentarily. Rita explains she's not a nurse, but a psychologist, and she has hidden motives of her own for being at Camp Redwood. We flash back a year where Rita, now called Donna Chambers, is trying to convince Dr. Hopple to allow her to interview Mr. Jingles. She asserts her credentials as a serial killer expert and claims to have extracted confessions from some of the biggest names in the serial killer encyclopedia. Dr. Hopple is convinced and Donna is allowed access. Using the news article announcing the soon-to-be reopened Camp Redwood, she elicits a response from the normally quiet Richter, and the two of them have an interesting exchange about the psychological beginnings of a violent mind. What if I told you that something twisted your brain and gave you no choice? So what you're saying is, maybe it isn't all my fault. To put it simply, Donna believes the abundance of pornography is, at least, partially to blame, along with Mr. Jingle's Vietnam experiences. Like Dr. Sartain in 2018's Halloween sequel, Donna wants to see Mr. Jingles in his natural habitat and gives him the idea of escaping and returning to the scene of the crime. We discover it is Donna who supplied Mr. Jingles with his signature rain slicker, which was left outside the hospital before he escapes. We also learn that Donna has kidnapped the actual nurse Rita and stashed her among the woods at Camp Redwood to assume her identity. Xavier, Trevor, and Montana are making their own way through the woods when Xavier has an attack of consciousness and wants to warn Margaret and Chef Birdie of the danger they are all in. Montana selfishly just wants to move on, but they convince her before Mr. Jingles appears and they have to hide, discovering the bound and gagged Nurse Rita. The real Nurse Rita. Our three stars escape unharmed. Can't say so much for Nurse Rita. <coughs> yeah, you'll see. But now they know Donna's secret, and they find Ray in the woods shortly afterwards. Chet is also later rescued by Xavier and Trevor. Trevor, in a supersized display of machismo, is able to overpower Mr. Jingles and send him into the spiked pit, but they discover soon it was just another imposter. The last sequence of the episode starts with Montana and Ray arriving at the parking lot, wondering where everyone else is. Ray is ready to leave, showing his cowardly side, especially when the Night Stalker appears from the darkness. Ray jumps on the ninja and takes off, leaving Montana in a cloud of dust. Unfortunately, Ray doesn't make it very far when Mr. Jingles decapitates him as the bike whizzes by. Ah! 
The Night Stalker approaches Montana and they kiss passionately? Wait, did I read that right? Shit, yeah, I did. Oh well. The episode ends with Montana asking, why haven't you killed her yet? Hold up! What the fuck? Everybody is shady in 1984. Jesus. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. This episode does rely heavily on flashbacks, which I was worried would be an overused storytelling device in this season, but so far it's not too bad. We're also learning a lot about the hidden backstories of the main characters. Rita, slash Donna, is not who she originally appeared to be and has an agenda. Ray is a big pussy, eh, or should I say was a big pussy. Mr. Jingle still hasn't flagrantly admitted to the original slayings, so I still have my doubts about him. When I told them I couldn't remember killing those kids, they told me that I'd had a psychotic break, that I was evil, and that I was the worst kind of human being. Irredeemable. Although he has killed a few people now, perhaps his motive for breaking out wasn't to relive the massacre, but to get revenge on the woman who framed him, Margaret. Margaret, by the way, was noticeably absent from this episode entirely, which could mean she's been busy with her own killings and dastardly plans. Montana reveals herself as a conniving bitch at the end, too, which definitely comes out of left field, but actually makes a lot of sense for her personality type, an adventure-seeking whore who loves the rush of anything illicit, including murder. We didn't learn much about Brooke in this episode, and there's a lot to learn in the next episode about Richard Ramirez and Montana's relationship, but it looks like it's going to be a fun ride. A lot more fun than Ray's short ride on the motorcycle. Surprisingly, American Horror Story has kept the pace up pretty well through three episodes now, but there's a lot of stories still to tell. Although we've already seen some major twists, I expect some big ones along the way, and you should too. I can't really say anything bad about this season yet. I've really enjoyed it so far, and hope they can keep it up. I'm expecting a lot of flashbacks in the next episode, because we have to get some background on how Montana and the Night Stalker met, and what their relationship could mean for the rest of the season. Who does Montana want killed so badly? Brooke? Margaret? Rita? Someone we haven't met yet? The obvious guess is Brooke, since he attacked her in episode one, but why? What connection do Brooke and Montana have that has driven her to want her dead? Also, is the pussy that good that Montana convinced some poor guy to go on a killing spree for? I have got a girl whose pussy is so good, if you threw it up in the air, it would turn into sunshine. <laughs> and there has to be a bigger reason for Donna's interest in Mr. Jingles. What do you think it is? If you have any speculation, let's discuss in the comments below, and stay tuned next week for another Slash Report. We also have Slash Reports for Creep Show and The Walking Dead, which debuts Sunday, coming soon, along with our new full episode dropping on Thursday. Until next time, don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you soon. DCS out! Woo!